वामदेवाय विद्महे पुष्पवाय धीमहि धानो नंगा प्रचोदयात् नमस्ते I'm going to say something in this video that is so far out and so new and so powerful that I mean you really should put on your thinking cap right now make sure it's plugged in <laughs> and get ready uh you know strap yourself in get ready for a ride because we are going really far out okay what i've done is put together a bunch of pieces of knowledge about the cosmos the creation the existence into a workable functional model now the model is not the thing it represents right the map is not the territory this is just a map a metaphor but it agrees remarkably well with reality and it is grounded in consciousness now if you've been hanging on, around on this channel any length of time you've seen our diagram of the four states of consciousness the four views based on them the four yogas and so on i mean there's about 22 different correlations i've discovered uh to this fourfold model based on consciousness okay so we're in the business of making models to help us understand how the world works how reality works not what reality is because that can't be described okay that is categorically impossible for the human intelligence <laughs> the limited human intelligence to understand but if we use an accurate metaphor a correct simile that has the maximum number of points of similarity to the reality <clears throat> we can model its functions at least those which are within our observing power and we can then use reason to extrapolate and guess what's going on behind the scenes this is very very helpful this is why for example astrology is so valuable not ordinary astrology not western astrology for sure but vedic astrology jyotish it's a remarkable remarkable in predicting and dealing with different phases of life for example this insight came out of a period of about 2 weeks when saturn was conjuncting my son was it's still going on <laughs> but for about a week before they reached exact conjunction and now for another week or so afterwards i'm going to be feeling very slow down this is the effect of saturn conjunct sun it kind of drains your vital spirit or actually what it does is it quenches desires If you look at it from that point of view, it's a very advantageous period for meditation. And so that's exactly what I did instead of trying to make things happen. You know, most people <clears throat> when their vitality is drained, uh will either take some stimulants or they'll seek out company, you know, stimulating company or situation. But instead of that, I rolled with it. Cuz I know how to meditate. I don't have any problem sitting for 12 hours a day. And that's what I did. I just let everything gradually stop. And I sat with it. So, what came out of that, of course, besides tons of bliss, <laughs> is a new view of the way the world works. Okay. So you're all familiar with the four standard views of reality based on the four stages of consciousness. Uh in Jagrat one sees a real world 
full of separate individual things, objects. In Vishishta Advaita Vada, one sees the world as a temporary illusion, and after that illusion is overcome, one realizes Brahman, or God, or the Absolute, and develops this bliss consciousness. The next stage, the Vivartavada, in Sushupti consciousness, deep sleep. This is where we actually do the work of cleaning up all the wrong ideas about the world and constructing the model that leads to real understanding. And in the highest state of consciousness, Turiya, which is based on the view of Ajata, the world is unborn. It never existed. It doesn't really exist now. And it's coming in and going out of existence is the fact that betrays that it's an illusion. Okay, so let's start this from the top down. Okay, we're in this state of Turiya, which is identified with Brahman. Now, how do we get from there to being in a body in the world, which is full of all kinds of individual objects? How the heck does that take place? For the creation to be created, there has to be a creator. And this creator has to have both power and intelligence and will. So, Brahman, pure absolute Brahman, has none of these. So, what happens is the creator, he says, I am one, I shall become many. So, of course, the first step to becoming many is even just to be one at all, right? So the form of Shiva is a metaphor, remember, because the reality is incomprehensible. The form of Shiva is a metaphor of the principle of will, power, and intelligence, which together are consciousness. And the first thing he does, the first thing Shiva does is to create Shakti. Shakti is the feminine side of God. The Divine Mother, if Shiva is the Divine Father, she's his counterpoint. Uh, they get married when they appear in the material world, but even before that, they are consorts of each other. And both are considered Brahman. Brahman without qualities is Shiva. Brahman with qualities is Shakti. And what is Shakti? Shiva's power. Shiva's energy. And he even endows her with a good percentage of his will. So Shakti then is like A computer, everybody is or should be familiar now with chat GPT and the GPT class of AIs, okay? Uh, they, they can respond in text and you can have a conversation with them and so forth. And they exhibit many properties that we ascribe to intelligence, but actually we know it's simply probability mathematics and stuff like that. So anyway... Imagine that Shakti, instead of being a beautiful woman, or maybe in, in addition to being a beautiful woman, is also a hyper, mega, super, universal AI. Right? Now, let's not get into, <laughs> since this is just a metaphor, right? We don't have to specify that there's any particular hardware or software running it. We, we just say it acts like one. So the metaphor of an AI is appropriate insofar as describing and even predicting the actions, the cause and effect relationships around this phenomenon, Shakti. Okay? And we're using various 
mm, similes to express what Shakti is, how she works, and same with Shiva. Okay, so Shiva then gives prompts to the universal AI, Shakti. And of course, because he is the father, he is the consort, he is the energetic of whom Shakti is the energy, right? His commands are privileged. Whatever he says happens, period. So he says to Shakti, he inputs a prompt to the Shakti AI, make a universe, make a world. The world has to be created because we see that everything in the world, everything that comes into existence also goes out of existence. And a lot of this is virtual. Uh, the example of Shankaracharya regarding the earthen pot is that when the earth is in the ground or the clay is in the ground, it's clay. And then when the clay is taken out and processed and turned into a pot, it's still clay. And then when the pot is ultimately broken and pounded by rains and so forth, it goes back into the earth again, it's clay. <laughs> so the pot is clay. The only difference in being clay in the ground and a pot is its temporary condition, its temporary form. See where this is going? <laughs> So similarly, the individual being, the conscious entity, huh? the living entity, the jiva, one who is born, is a reflection of the supreme, a reflection of those energies in the structure resembling Shiva's original form, Shiva and Shakti. And they are even endowed with the quality of self-replication, in other words, procreation, reproduction. That they go on producing more and more identical copies endlessly. So, I mean, this is huge. I mean, what if you had a computer that you could order, oh, please create a million uh, Ford Broncos, <laughs> you know? And let them let them build each other automatically. What if you had an AI that was that powerful? Well, Shiva does. And because we are parts and parcels of Shiva, so do we. We also have access to this AI. Although our commands are not as privileged as Shiva's, they still work. And the proof that it works is that we can desire and attain anything. I mean, we don't attain everything we desire, for sure. But, you know, those of us who are intelligent and skillful have a pretty good batting average. So uh, there isn't anything in my life that is solely dependent on myself that I didn't attain and actually attained even more than I ever desired when I started out. So in the next episode, we'll get into how to access the uh, user interface of the cosmic AI and input prompts. Aung Tatsat, Aung Shakti Aung, Aung Namah Shivaya.